Welcome to Creative Piecemeal Podcast, a podcast for creatives. I'm your host, Tammy Takeishi. Join me for compelling conversations with artists, actors, authors, musicians, and other creatives about the impact of the creative and fine arts in their lives and our ever-changing world. Thank you for listening. Hello, and welcome to Creative Piecemeal Podcast. I'm your host, Tammy, and today I am joined by portrait photographer Dario Acosta. His brilliant work captures top musicians, artists, CEOs, and more, and can be seen across advertisements, magazines, and CD covers. He's a graduate of the School of Visual Arts and has been focusing his lens on creating mesmerizing photos for the past 15 years. It is an honor to have you on the show. Good morning and welcome. Good morning. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. We're going to jump right into questions, and you do travel a lot for your work. What is one of your favorite places to have visited so far? Um, well, I had a three-day three day shoot with a musician uh, for several CD covers that we shot at the same time in London. Well, it was in London and just outside in the English countryside on some old trains and and uh, it was very cool with the piano, and uh, I think that was one of the highlights of of a, of going to travel and having like uh, amazing support staff to like get everything done. Is there any place that you haven't traveled yet that's on your bucket list? <laughs> yeah, everywhere. I mean, you know, I think travel, you know, travel opens your mind and visually. Uh, enriches you I mean I haven't been to the continent of Africa that would be cool and I haven't been out uh, east yet Europe I go to quite often and um, I've been to South America several times and you know the United States has a million places that that I haven't seen yet so there's always there's a ton of places I, I can't even pick one that's okay though it's good to have a long bucket list because you know it gives you options yeah, as long as you get the time to uh, check them off. Yes, yeah. So you've worked with some pretty impressive clientele and traveled near and far, but do you have a funny or favorite memory from your time as a portrait photographer so far? I think that not one particular thing, but something that just kind of happens quite often is the unexpected. Um, and I don't know if it's funny or what, but it's, um, for example, you scout a location, you... Uh, Everything looks great. You know, you scout it at the time that you're going to shoot. Uh, and then um, you scout it the day before. Uh, and then you, you go the next day and it's completely different. We had a shoot and there was this great old brick wall that just was perfect for this portrait. And uh, scouted it, shot in the light the day before just to make sure the day of the shoot we walk over to the spot and the maintenance super guy is literally painting over uh with fresh paint on the whole wall so those those kinds of things where you know you just you don't expect it one of the first shoots that i did out in los angeles years ago i scouted the location in the morning you know in the afternoon and the light quality and everything the shoot was scheduled in the morning uh, for the next day. And I didn't realize at the time that you have this fog that comes in from, from the ocean in the morning. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it was completely like cloudy and, and, and dark. And, you know, it burned off luckily by the time we shot, but I was just not prepared for it, like completely different. So those kinds of things are funny in a way, um, you know, but then you have to just kind of sort through them. Right. Yeah. Bounce back and adapt. and things Yeah. Like that. Yeah, exactly. So I'm going to dig deeper a little bit for this next question. Do you recall a pivotal moment in your life when you realized you wanted to do something in the arts? Yeah, I I, I went to a, a high school that was kind of college preparatory. And it was a, a Catholic high school. So it wasn't like uh, arts related. I didn't have any kind of art education background other than like what you do in high school, you know, and it was just not really nothing. 
And I went to visual arts to, where I ended up going to school, School of Visual Arts, and they had a weekend kind of a program for, for high school students. The minute I got there, I was hooked. I, I knew that that's what I wanted to do. The minute that I saw, uh, oh, we were talking about film back then, okay? Um, so the minute that I put a print in, well, developed my film and myself one day. We, we went out and shot and then developed the film. The next day we came in to the dark room and uh, processed what we shot, you know, printed what we shot. And uh, the minute that I saw that image come up in the, in the uh, developer on the tray in the dark room, I was, that's it, I was hooked. Haven't done that in a while though. <laughs> no dark room work in a while. <laughs> is, that, is that something people still do, dark room work? Oh yeah, sure. There's more popularity in it now too, um, just because, you know, it's just something slower paced and um, professionally, it's kind of hard to go back because it, it took a while to professionally shoot digitally, you know, until everything really became kind of equal to film uh, or better than because of the immediacy. Uh, but, um, you know, you shoot film, you know, there's a, there's a lapse between what you shot is just in your memory until you get the film back and you see. And so professionally, I haven't shot film uh, for a couple of years, but you know, it's all been digital. I do have a dark room, but my, I mean, most of my quote unquote dark room work is, is, is on the computer now, you know, I mean, it's basically the same skills that you're working at, but just you, you do it on your computer instead of with great smelling chemicals. <laughs> Did you find that cameras progressed? Did you have to learn a lot more technology, a lot more software editing? Uh, software editing, yes. I don't, I don't do my own retouching. I, I let a professional retoucher retouch my photos. I just give them specs, you know, and what I want. And I, I can retouch a little bit. They, they did make it easier and easier and easier for you to use things like Photoshop or Lightroom or, you know, or Capture. It did take a while for me to switch from film to digital just because the cameras early on just were not equivalent and everything was slower. Now everything is much faster. Uh, and the cameras, I mean, now really all I focus on right now is the, the basics, the, you know, I've stopped shutter speeds. At this point, it's really the same as shooting film, but faster pace. You see, you see what you got like right away and you know if you have it and you can move on or if you wanna explore a little bit more um, there's no limitations to, we shot 10 rolls of film already and you, we can't shoot anymore because, you know, we're going to go out of bu over budget or, you know, those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. What are some things that you look for when you're shooting a photograph? Technically the basics, you know, balance, the quality of the light, the, the feel that you get. It's not, it's not just having something in focus and the right exposure. It's, my ideal photograph is a photograph that you forget is a photograph, you know, yeah. that you look at it and you just transport it there and you feel what it's like to, to be in that space, in that rectangle or square, but that you're not looking at a photograph, but you're just looking at a moment. I'd say that, uh, that a moment. Oh, that's a wonderful thought. Yeah. Because it's what it is. It's a moment. It really is a moment. Yeah. Yeah. It, you know, it's just a matter of capturing a split second. And if you look at well, it was what well, was a contact sheet is, you know, now you're just looking at it on the computer. But if you look at the progression, uh, it's just a split second, not even a split second. It's fast enough split second between one frame and another frame that that moment comes alive and then it goes away. And you try and get that moment always and get a balance, get, a, get the balance of the person because I'm shooting, all, all I'm shooting is really portrait work, that the person is, everything comes together at one point. You know, 90% of the work that I do now is musicians and singers, which, which are musicians anyway. But, um, but I look at a photo shoot as a rehearsal. Okay, so we meet, we sit down, we get our tools out, you know, we get our instrument out, put sheet music up, right? So you, so you do all of those kinds of things musically, right? But for us, you know, they come here, we, we take a look at the wardrobe, whether we're shooting on location or in the studio. And the whole shoot, as we start shooting, it's just you know, fine tuning the instrument, getting it right, getting it right. And then all of a sudden in that rehearsal time, you got the performance, which is that one image that we said, everything kind of comes through. And then you keep rehearsing again until you get that 
moment again, you know, until you get that, that quality in, in the shot, that performance. That's a really interesting way of looking at that. I like that. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah, because, because you know, it takes, we're not, when we do a photo shoot, we're not shooting 10 photographs. You know, we're, we're not shooting 20. We're shooting like 2,000 photographs. Oh, wow. Uh, you know, in a day. And you can't, you know, you, you can't expect the person to understand that, like, uh, out of the 2,000, 1,900 are not going to be good, you know, <laughs> because it's not a good, you know, ratio. But it is because it's a rehearsal, you know? Yeah. Would you say a lot of it is gut reaction also when you got that perfect shot in the series of the 2000s? And you're like, that's the one? Or I always trust my gut. Okay. I always, you know, I've been doing it for a long time. I've been, sh- I've been shooting for, you know, close to 30 years and, and fine tuning all the time, shooting all the time to get better. When I'm not, when I'm not shooting a job, I'm usually shooting a test or something just uh, because you, you can't rely on, I mean, it's really, it's just like a musician. They're, they're practicing their piano or the violin or the cello or whatever instrument they're playing, flutes, whatever. They're, they're practicing every day a couple of hours because they'll lose that muscle memory, right? It's the same for me. It's just a visual, visual muscle that, you know, you're constantly, whether it, you know, with portrait work, it's, it's working with a person each time for the first time, usually most of the time. And so if I'm shooting a test, it's really just getting the, that, how to get what you want out of the person a little bit, you know, like, yeah, just getting to know them, like icebreaker and things like yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. Things like that, that, that then you bring into jobs that you bring into, you know. It was just so fascinating to hear more about how that that works from the photographer side, because, you know, as you say, most people who are behind the lens, they don't always Talk about the beauty and the magic of what they do. I was curious, what was your very first camera that you ever shot on? And do you still own it? Uh, yeah, I have. It's a Canon AE-1 program, uh, 35 millimeter. That, well, that was the first camera that I kind of went to school with and shot with. My very, very first camera was like the family camera. And it was just a little no brand continental. I have it. I bought one on eBay, but it's not the original, but I bought one on eBay. Uh, yeah, it was just like a 110 little camera. Nice. And of course, you've progressed up to, to different cameras since then. You know? Yeah, yeah. Every every couple of years, you know, I I went from 35 millimeter to finally getting my Hasselblad, uh, which is a two and a quarter. And that camera was supposed to be a lifetime camera. But then digital came in. <laughs> I shot with with my Hasselblad two and a quarter for years and years and years. It's a beautiful camera. I still have them, all of them. But uh, then different camera makers got better at, you know, first I was shooting with Nikon and then I switched to Canon and then I switched back to Nikon briefly. Then I switched back to Canon and then I am now shooting with another camera, Fuji. Nice. What do you think of the amazing technology in phone cameras nowadays that sort of turn everyone into like an armchair photographer? I mean, it's kind of it's kind of great because um, they're much more visually aware of things. People, the phones make everything so easy. Uh, sometimes I'm shooting something. So when we shoot professionally, our cameras are capturing like these raw files that we need to work on on the computer. They're not they're not perfect at all when they come out of the camera. And the iPhone pictures just look perfect. I mean, they just look like, wow, I hope I got that on, on my camera. <laughs> but the more photography, the better. They, you know, everybody, yeah, armchair photographers, you're right. There's, there's like a lot of them. And that is a problem because a lot of it is not quality. But, you know, overall, I guess the more people are visually alert to things, the better it is for everybody. As long as they understand the difference between uh, an iPhone or photo shoot for social media and professional you know and what the professional brings to the table you know yeah yeah there's certainly quite a difference for sure between people shooting a picture of their flower in their garden versus a professional coming in and taking a portrait again you spoke about how you work with a lot of musicians have you ever played musical instruments yourself no I've tried the guitar several times Uh, at least four times I've tried taking multiple lessons with different people for for you know different times in my life to play the guitar 
I just can't get it. I, I, I mean, it is part of, part of it is having the time to uh, practice. And the other part is that I think that uh, my visual, my eyes are just a lot stronger than my ear is to the subtleties that you need to make music. Uh, so I'm always in awe of anybody that makes music. I wish I could play the guitar, but uh, nah, no, no, no luck yet. You certainly do amazing work with photography. So, <laughs> thank you. If we were to sneak a peek at your music collection, what are some things we'd find in there? Mostly classical music. I mean, that's what I listen to uh, mo- mostly. I do have, you know, a lot of recordings and a lot of recordings of people that I've shot, like CD covers I've done. That's most of my collection is just people I've worked with, stuff I've done, and, or stuff of people that I want to work with and, and so forth. But um, I also have two daughters, so there's a lot of embarrassing CDs <laughs> in my collection. But, but yeah, mostly classical music. Can't go wrong with classical. Do you ever do photo shoots with music on in the background? Not with classical music. Classical music is not good for most photo shoots with musicians, especially classical musicians, because (laughs) they're concentrated on, oh, they missed a note. Oh, I wouldn't have played it that way. Oh, uh, you know, oh, this is a good recording. Oh, yeah. Can you change this recording? Because this isn't a good recording of, you know, this Bach uh, concerto or whatever. Uh, So, and, And also the classical, for the most part, as a background, it's just the tempo and it's just too subtle. It's kind of like working out to classical music, you know? Uh, it, it's just not, you know, you need something a little bit more more upbeat. Even if you can't, if you concentrate it on the shoot and you can't hear it, that kind of pop and uh, pop and like rap and, uh, you know, it just has, a, has a, a tempo, a beat that's just a little bit easier to shoot with. So uh, most of the stuff is just contemporary that we're listening to. And it makes a, a huge difference. I was going to say that makes a lot of sense. It, like you said, comparing it to working out, you know, you need something like upbeat and, yeah. you know, there's energy there. What is the biggest sector of photography and visual art that you're curious about right now? I really try to break that mold of, of classical music being stiff, you know, mm-hmm. um, visually, visually. Because, uh, I mean, if you look at a lot of CD covers and stuff, that are out there, older, older work. It's just, you know, it's, I don't know. It's just like a pastoral painted scene, uh, you know, like it's, it's, I mean, everybody that's making music is energetic in their, in their way and they're creative and they are not stiff and they're not boring. I always opt for showing the dynamic quality of a, of a person, whether they're, a classical musician or or something more contemporary i think that portraits or the right portraits just bring out that quality and it kind of it's a marriage with their music you know Mm, very true yeah because you're capturing another side of that musician yeah how has your life in the creative arts been different than you imagined it would be i don't know if i ever had really time to think about what my life would be like in the creative arts you know it's just you just you just do what you do you know what I mean uh mm-hmm. like I said when I was 17 and I did that, that class in at SVA I mean from then on I just didn't but I didn't think of uh what my creative life would be like I mean in the beginning it's not a creative life in the beginning you're just for the most part uh, if you don't have any money when I, I and I never you know I always had to work for everything uh, so if you you know you needed to buy a camera you you know you need to work until save up money to buy that camera right it's not like there was it's not like i had money you know i never really kind of thought i just did what you you do you know mm. i mean in the beginning it's just like terrible terrible kinds of photography not the kinds of stuff you want to do not the kind of stuff that i'm doing now but it's just you know you got to pay bills so i never really kind of thought okay this is what my life is going to be like well, you know what, now come to think of it. Yeah, maybe a little bit, because by the time I got through some of those, you know, those corporate like jobs that we used to do back in the day, just like, you know, headshots of corporate people. And uh, you were looking at photography in magazines like Vanity Fair or 
GQ or um, you know uh, all these profiles of singers and musicians and uh, work of people like uh, back then like Annie Leibovitz or something like that and that's you know kind of what you inspired to be like you know uh, to have that you know to to work with some of the best people producing the most amazing art in the world at the moment so that's what I I guess that that is what you know what I envisioned my creative life to be like. And, you know, I think that artists, when they do have to do grunt work or the path is not straight and narrow, I think once they reach one of their milestones in life or where they're content, I think they, they're able to appreciate it even more. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You're always grateful. I'm always grateful to come into the studio or a location and do what I want to do. And I, years of doing that grunt work and years of doing that grunt work and doing great work. Uh, well, great work. I don't want to say great work about my work, but, you know, years of doing grunt work and years of doing work that you wanted to do, you know, the, the kind of work that you were in, aspired to do. So uh, I'm always grateful for the ability. Uh, you're right. Every, every, everybody that goes through those kinds of hardships uh, appreciates everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What advice do you have for people who want to be a professional photographer? Like what, what would you suggest? The only thing I suggest is it has to be in you. It has to be the only thing. It can't be a backup. I, you can't be, you can't be one thing and a photographer professionally. There's too much competition and not good competition. There's a lot of terrible competition out there but you know a lot of times it comes down to money and so you're competing against people sometimes you know just money wise but I would say that it just has to be in your heart you just have to know because it will it has to take over your life you know it's an art that that has to whatever you do I guess I mean painting music whatever you do you can't just do it halfway you know you have to do it all the way or you just not you're not going to be successful um, if you don't, if your focus isn't pinpoint on what your craft is, then you're, you're just not going to be where you want to be eventually, you know? Very true. Very true. If you had no limits and no budgets on a project, what do you think you would do? I mean, I would travel and I would travel and, and do portrait work of, of people around the world. I mean, it's capturing, you know, portraits of people is amazing, uh, and and travel is amazing and just seeing the differences and the similarities we all have you know and just really I mean that's if I had if I didn't have to work and I had like you know see that's the funny thing if I didn't have to work I would still do what I do I just you know maybe just uh, be a little more selective um, but I'd still I mean I do what I do because I love it if I didn't have to work didn't have to make money if I won the lotto and made that was a multi-billionaire. Um, I travel around and just shoot, you know, faces around the world. That's wonderful. You know, it's that's always great when when people have such a passion for what they do that they would still do it no matter what. What's a common myth or stereotype about being a photographer that you hope to break with your work? With my work, my I mean, my work is really uh, more so about the other person than it is about me. I think I don't I don't see myself in my work other than the capacity to break through to what that other person is projecting. Uh, you know, I don't I don't see my all my work is is varied. It's different. I don't see a style like I don't have a particular image style. People do recognize my work, but really they recognize my work because you could see the person in the photograph. You know, you can feel the person a little bit. But wow, as far as a myth, my, so my work isn't really about me. So, but uh, I can't, I, I don't know. I, that's a tough one because I, I don't know what, um, what kind of myth, um, I mean, we're, we're not like cool <laughs> <laughs> photographers are, you know, I mean, maybe, maybe some fashion photographer is cool or, but we are like, we're like the people that I shoot, just everyday people, you know, uh, kind of nerdy because, I mean, if you're talking about photographers, like real image makers, then, you know, we're, we're nerdy. We, 
the myth is that we're nerdy. <laughs> we're not <laughs> you guys. <laughs> what is something that photography has taught you in your life? Um, to appreciate details, to appreciate subtleties, and to appreciate light. I, I don't know if everybody goes around really appreciating how beautiful the light is at any moment, you know. And as a photographer, uh, light is the Light is the only tool we have. That's what we paint with. That's, uh, you know, this color. And, but light is, without light, we can't do anything. So you really appreciate light and the beauty of the sun and, and how it transcends, transcends, like, landscapes and moments. And, you know, so I'd say uh, just that, that appreciation to the details and subtleties of light. I would have to agree. There are times when the way the light streams in a window is just breathtaking. Yeah. Yeah. Even if and it picks up those little dust particles because flying through the air and yeah, all those things are beautiful. Yeah. What is something you wish you had known about photography or about having to have a photography business when you first started? That it's a business, um, that it's not just an art, but that it's a business that, that you need money. You need money for marketing you know, when I first started, it was completely different than now. You you really had to market, and to market, you had to you had to produce things. You know, you had to postcards to mail out, books to print and send out, portfolios that you needed to make prints of your work and to send out. All that's changed now. Marketing is much easier now. I, that's it. I just I just wish I knew that. Like you know, I wish I. In the beginning, I'd say I, you, you realize, well, you know, you this is a business because uh, it takes a while to understand that you get a, hit a lot in the beginning with, um, well, if you do this for us, we'll get you more work later on. And you end up doing a lot of stuff that you think is going to be good for you. And it's not. So um, that's it. Um, that's the only thing I think that I wish I knew back then. If you could shoot a portrait of any creative person who's passed on that you haven't had a chance to shoot in life, who would that have been? Maybe Picasso or Salvador Dali. Picasso, I'd say. That would be very interesting for sure. Yeah, and, and he's not a musician, huh? But <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, musician, uh, maybe Carlos. But I think if I had just one choice, I think Picasso would be really interesting too, to coordinate a shoot with. That would be. One final question. In your own words, what does it mean to live a creative life? All right, to be, to live a creative life, to understand that, you know, you, that you have, you have time for yourself, you have time to enjoy things, and you'll have time, time to create, but, you know, and time to worry, because, you know, living a creative life, unfortunately, there's very few in our society that can live a creative life and, and not have to worry about bills so you know if you're going to live a creative life you got to understand you were going to worry about bills um there's no no matter you know unless you're extremely successful and that's that's very very few you're still going to be worried about bills but you're also going to have time if you go into it into some sort of a creative life you will have time to enjoy the things that life that is part of life. You know, you, you will have time to travel. You will have, yeah, well, you'll make time to, to enjoy these things because they enrich your creative mind, you know, travel, museums, movies, uh, listening to music, going for walks and enjoying the light. All those things are the things that make your creative mind full of ideas and, and things. And that's, I mean, if you're living a creative life, Whatever field you are, painter, photographer, musician, writer, you're, all those things just fill your head visually, emotionally, and that's where your creativity kind of flourishes. Excellent, excellent. It's always interesting to hear what each guest has to say because everyone says something different, but I think at the core is still that sense of how special and unique living a creative life is yeah definitely i mean you were talking about being grateful i'm grateful for all those positives and when i worry about something like a bill or like you know when i worry about something i always i always think to myself 
well. The other side of this is that you can go to a museum in the middle of the day uh, because this is work. You know, you're you're enriching yourself. You're making yourself a better artist. You know, you can go for a walk to clear your mind. You don't have to, you know, sit at the computer and, and do something like for somebody else. Any final words to the audience before we go? Just remember that if you do enter into a creative life, just be grateful. Be grateful for, for all those little nuances of, of having a creative life and just, you know, make sure you're creating all the time. Excellent. Dario Acosta, thank you so much. And listeners, please check the show notes to connect with him on social media and to follow his work. Thanks for listening to the podcast. Like the show? Have a question? Stop by the Facebook and Instagram pages. Links are in the show notes or search for a creative piecemeal podcast on social media and click follow for all the latest.